there, I'm Ali Astrocyte and you're watching Neurotransmissions. This week we have a very special episode. I'm coming to you from San Diego Comic Con! enough to live right here in sunny San Diego and so we're visiting the conference for the third year in a row and this year we have the chance to attend a lot of really cool panels about science and sci-fi in the media so we want to tell you a little bit about what we've gotten to see this year and especially to talk about a really cool study that we got to learn about the other night. Yes. There was a really great panel all about the science of Star Wars. Uh, a lot of what they talked about was speculating on the potential for the reality of different things that we see in the Star Wars universe. So like, how realistic are the blasters? Or how could you build a lightsaber? And uh, at this point, it sort of sounds like those are all outside the realm of possibility. But one great question that I thought was raised, and that would definitely be worth exploring in more depth, is are droids slaves? So kind of considering the ethics of the science in Star Wars. So if you can create an android that'll do whatever you want it to do, but it also seems to have free will, what does that say about that universe? Also at that panel, uh, I had the chance to ask a question. And one of my big questions was related to one of our earlier videos, the psychology or the science of Jedi mind control. And specifically, I was interested in, given how we've made advances in technology to do things like deep brain stimulation or transcranial magnetic stimulation, how far are we from real live uh, Jedi mind tricks? And uh, I had the chance to ask this question to Dr. Travis Langley, who's written a number of books about psychology in different sci-fi universes. And that uh, question won me a book all about the psychology of Star Wars. So thank you so much to Dr. Travis Langley. We're really excited to read that book and learn more about your perspectives on the psychology of Star Wars. We also attended another panel that was all about turning sci-fi to sci-fact and they actually didn't really talk too much about how they go about doing that but they did talk about some really cool new technology that's out there including a lot of conversations about AI robotics and 3D printing and I happened to win a really cool robot so I won a Dash robot which is actually intended as a toy for kids but we're really looking forward to getting to play with that a little bit and hopefully that'll appear on some future videos because it looks like a really great uh, opportunity to teach kids about coding and computers. I was especially excited to get to attend an event where Hank Green of SciShow and the Vlog Brothers was having a conversation with Jean Luen Yang, the current National Ambassador for Young People's Literature, about his project Reading Without Walls. And this project is specifically geared at getting kids to read literature they might not otherwise uh, check out. So getting kids to read books about people who don't look like them, and getting kids to read books about topics they might not otherwise be interested in, especially STEM topics. So obviously that's very relevant to the stuff that we care about at Neurotransmissions. It was really great to get to hear them talking about diversity in literature and how non-traditional formats such as comics and graphic novels can really be used to engage kids in new and exciting ways and to engage kids who might not otherwise be excited about reading. One of the coolest things we've had the opportunity to see here at Comic-Con this year was a panel called Scum and Villainy, Psychological Factors Influencing the Characters We Love to Hate. It's a study from a group of psychologists who are really interested at looking at the correlation between characters that people like and dislike and those individuals' own personality traits. So this study involved over 350 participants through an online survey program thanks to Amazon's Mechanical Turk. Participants went through a list of over 450 characters across a variety of media formats, comics, film, and animation. And then they had those participants rank those characters on a like to dislike scale. Once they were done with that task, participants then took a number of personality tests that would look at how strongly their personalities reflected different dark triad traits. So the dark triad are a particular set of personality traits that include narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. 43% of these participants ranked highly on one trait, while about another 32% of them ranked highly on two, while only about 1%, which is about the expected number for any population, ranked highly on all three traits. There were a lot of really fascinating correlations, and there were two in particular that I thought were particularly interesting. So first of all, people who rate highly as having narcissistic and Machiavellian personalities tend to like Jar Jar Binks. So surprise number one, there are people who like Jar Jar Binks, and surprise number two, somehow that's correlated with your narcissism and Machiavellianism. Really fascinatingly, of the 1% of people who ranked highly for all three traits, psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism, those people tended to really like two characters in particular, Joffrey from Game of Thrones and Superman. So. I don't know what you make of that, but I'm not too surprised. 
Superman has unlimited power in the adoration of the masses, and Joffrey has a lot of manipulative tendencies. With that introduction, let's go to our interview with the researchers on this study. All right, we're here with some of our wonderful panelists from the Dark Triad panel. Could you introduce yourselves for us? I am Dr. April Fugit. I am a professor at Marshall University. And I am Dr. Keith Beard. I'm also a professor um, at Marshall University. Well, we really enjoyed hearing all about how different personality traits correlate to how people like and dislike different characters. Could you tell us a little bit about why you were motivated to do this study? Um, I think that we really started because we both have a real love for everything pop culture, mm -hmm. and we have very different interests. So I like that character. He hates that character. And we were like, you know, what is the real motivation behind that? And um, one of Dr. Beard's areas of expertise, the one that he teaches in, is personality. We thought, well, that would be an interesting way. People are all the time interested in, you know, let me take this online quiz. And, and we thought maybe we could do something a little more scientific mm -hmm. um, and get a better idea about what people's personalities were like and why they like these particular characters as opposed to some of the fluff stuff that's out there. <laughs> what do you kind of see the application of this research being? Like where is this kind of, what is this inform? What is this going to be useful for? It's, um, there's a variety of different things. <laughs> um, coming from the clinical side of it, you know, if I say then, so tell me about what characters you like, because I know this research and kind of what we have found, it starts to give me an idea, even in the first session, of what this person might be like, and I can get a quick sense of that without having to do anything other than talk about something that's double-sided with it, helping me build rapport and, and kind of connecting with them. Um, other things with it have been advertising. Psychology is always about, you know, everything that humans do, and, and so um, some of the marketing areas have been another area. Another area that we worked with, um, we actually presented on last year, was job inventories. It was. So indeed. how does, um, you know, your interest in a particular um, character uh, inform, you know, maybe what kind of jobs or superpowers you would like to have or those kinds of things. How has Comic-Con been for you this year? Having fun? Amazing. Lots of fun. This is like our third time um, coming and now we're starting to feel like old pros at it. Getting to be around everybody who enjoys kind of the same thing and, and um, seeing everybody in the costumes, it's, it's just fun and entertaining. It's been a lot of fun too because we'll be in panels and they'll ask a question and we'll be like, oh, we're already collecting data on that. <laughs> so can I ask, speaking of villains, who's your favorite villain? Well, I joked in our session that Dr. Fugit was actually my favorite <laughs> villain of all time um, because she scares me. I like the Joker, you know, he's, he's psychologically complex and again being the, the clinical psychologist, my job is to try to figure somebody out and he's so complex and you never can really rhyme a reason, figure out what he's doing and so um, that's, that's a, a villain that I like. My favorite one, and it really is, she was born out of the data that we actually have is Dolores Umbridge from the Harry Potter series. Yeah. Because she spikes so often, and she spikes in a way that Voldemort doesn't. I mean, she fascinated me as a character when I was reading the books, and again, when I was watching in the movies, even though I think she's maybe a little more nuanced for me in the books. But it's just fascinating to see how people react to her. Mm -hmm. So I think at the moment I'm going to say that. Although, my great love is Darth Vader, so. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd probably have to go with Vader, too. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us. And thank you so much for the awesome panels. And looking forward to seeing more in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to Drs. Keith Beard and April Fugit for being here with us today. It's really been an honor to have you. You can learn more about them uh, by checking out the links in the description below, as well as learning more about Marshall University. We hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you were at Comic-Con and you saw any cool science or sci-fi related stuff, or if you really want us to do more content like this in the future, please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching this episode of Neurotransmissions. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe so you can catch our next video when it comes out. If you really like what we do, please consider contributing to our Patreon. We love to make these videos and your support really helps us out. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Allie Astrosite, over and out.